Welcome back, once again adventurers, to Let's Play Blaze Blue Calamity Trigger. In the last episode, Maichi decided to investigate the disturbance that Tao was causing, and lo and behold found that she was sparring with the boy vigilante Carl Clover. However, Lai Chi's uh, nature did not prevent her from attempting to stop the fight in any way, shape or form, but things definitely got a lot heated when Lai Chi realized that Carl Clover's sister is in fact the, uh, well, just so happens to be the Nox Victorious marionette known as Nirvana which led to a confrontation on her part, which uh, almost ended badly, but uh, yeah, but uh, things got even more heated, if you can believe it, uh, with Lychee pretty much chewing out both Tao Kaka and Carl Clover for sparring in the middle of the street in the first place. But now we're back in Orient Town, we're here to find Ragnar, or the more likely situation, he's probably going to find us while we're looking for him. Since he's a wanted bounty, I doubt he'll be on the main streets. I should make my way to the back alleys. Probably uh, a sound idea. Although then again, if Tao mentioned that he met her at a restaurant, um, that changes things, because Ragnar isn't, uh, he's a criminal by the, uh, inner world standards, to be sure, but, uh, he's not really a sort of, um, typical criminal. I check a few alleys and back streets. Huh? No way! I take another look at the wanted poster. He does look a little different, but there is no mistake. It's him. He seems a little different, but he definitely shares the same attributes. Yeah, that uh, caricature on the wanted poster is uh, no match for the real thing. Just a young guy with white hair, a red jacket, a giant sword, an azure grimoire, and a completely bored expression on his face as opposed to the scowl. But it's Ragnar the Blood Edge. Hey, isn't that him? Yeah, I think he is. Though something doesn't feel quite right. Sh should we let the librarian know? You idiot, you're just gonna buy yourself some more trouble. You're right. Let's pretend we didn't see anything. Now, of course, the residents of Orient Town are uh, just keeping quiet because they're not fond of the library either. Not surprising. Most people will do everything they can to avoid coming into contact with the librarian. Either he's incredibly brave or incredibly stupid. A wanted criminal, walking down the street in broad daylight. He heads for me, or he heads straight for me, and keeps on walking past me. Yeah, he's not interested, he's just minded in his own business before he goes in for his true objective. Excuse me. Once again, uh, Lychee putting her foot in, into matters. Huh? You call me? What was I thinking? Well, I've gone in to stop. What was I going to do now? Well, we have a uh, number of options we can respond with. Uh, do you think I could ask you a few things? The second option being, you're a wanted criminal, I can't have you running around. The third one is, uh, would you mind stopping by my place? Uh, we're going to ask him a few things, in this instance. Do you think I can have a moment of your time? I'd like to talk to you about a few things. Yeah, the, uh, well, don't want to be too bold or too forward, so, uh, hopefully we should be fine. If this is a religious solicitation, save it for someone else. 
Oh, trust me, that has nothing to do with anything at this moment. No, that's not it. You're, um, the person on this poster, right? Huh? What are you, a vigilante? Sorry, but I don't have time to deal with you. Yeah, Ragnar's only concern is the cauldron that lies in the heart of Kagutsuchi. I'm not trying to catch you, so don't worry. I haven't contacted the NOL either. Lychee, uh, trying to buy some time so that we can, uh, decide how best to handle the situation. You're not woman, but what the hell? So what do you want? I don't have much time. I have a favor to ask of you, regarding that power of yours. Yes, that's right. We know about the Azure Grimoire. Power? When I simply nod, his expression changes. I didn't think it could scowl anymore, but... I don't know how you found out about this grimoire, but it's best you forget what you saw here, for your own sake. Unfortunately, Ragnar, that option isn't in the cards. That's not it. I'm not the one after that power of yours. Why does trouble have to follow me wherever I go? Don't give me that look. You're making me worried. Yeah, well, uh, I think the inner world would be uh, them worried themselves, given the fact that you just trashed uh, their hierarchical cities. Thanks. And of course, uh, the fact that the uh, there are plenty of people who want to the power of the Azure for themselves, namely Carl Clover and Arakune. It seems like he's willing to listen to what I have to say. I've prepared myself for the worst, but he's actually much more polite than I was expecting. Indeed. The person chasing you is a bounty named Arachne. He's been attracted by that power of yours, and he'll eventually attack you for it. Well, uh, no point in, uh, mincing words, I see. What, is that it? That's not a problem. No one will complain of a bounty or two dies, right? I'll just claim self-defense and kill the bastard. Yeah, that's, uh, that's the problem right there. We don't want you to kill him. You can't kill him! What's with the sudden yelling? You're gonna give me a heart attack! I think you almost gave Lychee a heart attack with your declaration I'm earlier. I'm sorry, but you, you just can't kill a wreck. You mustn't kill him. So you've got your reasons, huh? Well, I guess I can hear you out. Explain yourself first. We'll go from there. So far, so good, it seems. And that's the situation. So if you meet him, please don't kill him. If I can find out where he is, I might be able to do something. I just don't have enough information right now. Well, Lychee has, uh, said his piece, but I doubt the Grim Reaper is into any sort of charity work. God damn it, why did I even decide to listen? It's too much to ask, isn't it? Probably just, uh, try and avoid him at all costs. Alright, alright, I get it, you. so don't give me that face. If he has the nerve to show up in front of me, I'll beat him to a pulp. So make sure you're around to pick him up. I guess that's the best we can hope for from Ragnar the Blood Edge. I... I didn't mean to make you go out of your way. Not like it matters. He's gonna jump me anyway, right? It's possible. Um, if you actually, uh, don't go into the sewer. But just so you know, I'm not gonna help you find him, got it? If he tries to kill me, I'll make him regret it. That's all. Yeah, I knew it was uh, too much to hope from the Grim Reaper. I have a responsibility to help him. If you find him, please tell me where he is. That is a very full on hope. It'd be a lot easier if I just beat the crap out of him. I take it this conversation's over, so I'll be on my way later. He's really so he impressive. Goes. But he certainly isn't a bad person. He doesn't seem like the kind of guy that should be on a wanted poster. 
Though I guess there's no use in me thinking about it. No, there is no use in thinking about it at all at this point. Well, we, uh... We've, uh, gotten that out of the way, so, uh... Wait a minute. Was that Ragna the Blood Edge? Oh dear. That's, um... That's, uh, very unfortunate. Because, um... That right there is Noel Vermillion. Uh, are you okay? Did he hurt you? Um, who might you be? Is the uniform not a, uh, dead giveaway that she's, uh, an officer of the NOL? Uh, my apologies. I'm NOL Lieutenant Noel Vermillion. You don't seem harmed. I need to chase that man, so I'll excuse myself. Yeah, about that. W wait! Something makes me stop the lieutenant before she runs after Ragnar. I know I didn't talk to him for that long, but I don't really think he's a bad person. Besides, I've heard librarian soldiers stop at nothing to get what they want. Well, uh, you're not entirely wrong when it comes to Noel Vermillion. However, unlike most other NOL officers, uh, Noel isn't uh, doggedly selfish and unscrupulous when it comes to her uh, responsibilities. If she goes after Ragnar, it could throw the whole city into chaos. I can't let that happen. Um, if you need something, could it wait till later? I'm in a hurry right now. I need to stop her. What should I do? Well, uh, the, we have two, um, we have two choices. Um, we could try to intervene, um, on Ragnar's behalf, but, um, we should probably, uh, take the lessons learned from when we did the same thing with Carl Clover. This time, I'm, I, we could basically enter into a fight with the Royal Vermilion, but I really don't want to uh, have the hassle of that. So uh, let's uh, pr try and do something a little bit more psychological. Because after all, the uh, as the residents have said, there are certain discrepancies between uh, Ragnar himself and the uh, illustration on the wanted posters. So uh, I believe that uh, I shall be uh, going for this one. That isn't Ragna, but he looks just like the drawing in the poster, L like his white hair. Yeah, his white hair and uh, the jacket and the sword, but uh, you will notice that his appearance is actually, there, you know, his uh, visage is uh, completely different. Exactly. That's why I was, uh, warning him. He shouldn't dye his hair white and spike it like that. Yeah, consider him a, uh, Groom Reaper cosplayer. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm sure no one is going to buy that particular excuse. Well, what do you mean? That's my younger brother. He's at a rebellious age right now. So he dyed his hair that color and wears that coat, thinking it's cool? Well, uh, you're right about the rebellious part, given that's, uh, Ragnar's, uh, battle theme, but, uh, we are kind of stretching things a bit. Huh? And there are those posters all over town, right? I didn't want anyone to mistake him for that wanted criminal, so I was telling him to stop wearing that. Not that he'd listen. I see. I thought I finally found him. Still... The townspeople should know that impersonating Ragna is a grave crime. Uh, I think Ragna would actually uh, be the one um, to take issue with anyone impersonating him more than uh, the inner will, but I yeah. understand. I'll excuse myself now. If you do happen to see that man on the poster, please give me a call right away. 
I can't believe that that actually worked. I almost feel bad. She's just a kid, and she's only doing her job the best she can. Well, uh, it laws well that ends well, at least. I hope she'll be okay. Yes, I'll be sure to do so. That was a very bold lie there. <sighs> That was quite a ruckus, but I can rest easy now. I told Ragna about him, so there's not much more I can do. I should head home for today. Indeed, that is probably the best. A lot has actually happened. Him, huh? Maybe I'll try the Kaka clan tomorrow and ask if they've seen him lately. Well, he does tend to, he does tend to prowl around the uh, NLL headquarters. No, what am I talking about? The Kaka village, Lost Town, that's right. I haven't stopped by in a while, so it might be a nice change of pace. Looks like we're heading down after all, it seems. Oh! It's Miss Fei Ling! And it's the Kaka kittens. The moment I arrive at the Kaka village, I head straight for the kittens. I come by the village every so often. To teach them. Yay! Run away, everyone! She's gonna make a study! Meow! Well, well, to be perfectly honest, the Kaka kittens are quite a lot more intelligent than uh, Tao Kaka, but uh, okay. They run in circles around me, yelling, run away! They don't really hate to study, they're just playing around. I just saw a door roll. Okay, settle down, everyone. Don't worry, I'm not here to make you study today. Aww. Hey, they're actually disappointed. Mm, we're not gonna study. Boring. We won't run, so teach us, please. I'm sorry, everyone, but I'm here to speak with the Elder today. Um, well, that's very unfortunate for the kittens. The Elder? Well, I guess there's no helping that. But, uh, on the bright side, you get to uh, run around the village and play with chickens. Yeah, though I'm not sure what it is we can't help. Oh well, let's go play with Chow instead. Consider this a uh, bonus reward. Disappointed with what I have to say, the kittens run off to play somewhere else. <laughs> it's nice to see energetic children. I hope he doesn't try to attack the village again. I better hurry to the Elder's place. Yeah, the sooner the better. Long time no see, Elder. How have you been? Oh, it's been too long, Lychee. I've been doing just fine, thanks to you. <laughs> so, what can I help you with today? It's regarding him again. Has there been any casualties in the village lately? Mm, yes and no, in a manner of speaking. It seems he's settled down for the time being. He hasn't eaten any villagers lately. Well, that's, uh, very good news. I see. That's good to hear. I will come up with a countermeasure for him as soon as possible. So if you can, please tell the villagers to be alert. That's about all we can do at this point. Understood. Is that all you wanted to tell me? Hmm. Maybe, maybe not. No. I came to give you a progress report on the research you requested. In exchange for researching the problems in her village, the Elder has agreed to provide me with information about Arukune, the village's problem. There are only a few males, and the population of the town has never been more than a hundred or so. Hmm. Come to think of it, uh, I kind of overheard something like this uh, during Noel Vermillion's story. The Elder worries that the village may disappear completely someday. 
and so she's asked me to look into it. Well, uh, given uh, the truth behind their existence to begin with, yeah, there are things in which uh, are going to have to be uncovered sooner or later. The Kaka clan isn't just a bunch of run-of-the-mill beast men. They're biological weapons left over from the Great War. Is that part of the secret of this village? Hmm. Yeah, so, uh... The Kaka themselves are actually, uh, also tools used to fight against the Black Beast in times of, uh, great peril and need. But now that that's over, the Kaka clan are left to pretty much live on their own. But given what the Elder has said, that might not last. I see. And what are your thoughts on the matter? That is a very intriguing question. Based on the results, there is no denying the fact that it's a device tempered to maintain a population of 100. A device? What kind of device, I wonder? The population of the village has never surpassed 100 people, as shown by the statistics. Probably a, uh, one of many fail-safes, um, implanted in the Kaka villages themselves. And if for some reason it suddenly dropped, asexual reproduction would automatically compensate for the numbers that were lost. So unless there is a phenomenon that will instantly wipe out the entire population, there is no fear of extinction. So the Kaka clan cannot go above 100 numbers, but uh, at the same time, if they go below 100, they do have a way to compensate, but it's not a surefire solution. Hmm. So that's how it is, huh? I guess we have no choice but to slowly disappear into the flow of time. Very, uh, melancholic words there. As I have mentioned before, even if your population drops for whatever reason, it will be restored automatically, in theory. In theory. So in the end, we are just another race that has been forsaken by God. All the children that are born anew are nothing more than copies of those who passed away. Jube is still alive. I should probably let you know that. Though we have a population of 100, we are essentially one entity. A hundred of us are like one human being. A single human being will always die. Of course, if there was, uh, given the fact that they are clones of a sort, if there was something to affect one of them, they would all perish. That's, uh, the unfortunate truth. Though there are some minor differences among your race, that doesn't change the fact that you've been cloned from a single organism. Indeed. For that reason, an environmental shift could potentially wipe out your entire race. But I believe we can reduce that risk through genetic alteration. So that explains Lychee's uh, expertise on the matter. So we must break even more laws of nature to prolong this pathetic excuse for a race. How could God ever forgive us? The Elder's words weigh heavily on my mind. It sounds as though she's prepared to watch her kind go extinct. Perhaps my mission is simply to delay that day as long as possible. I'll excuse myself for today. Leaving so soon, are you? I must apologize for the lack of hospitality. It's, uh, much appreciated. It's quite all right. I'm just glad to see the happy faces on those children. I can't thank you enough for teaching those kittens. You have done more than I can ask for, for our village. I just hope things can remain the way they are. If only that hope could be, uh... Well... 
could be maintained, Lanchi, but uh... once you find him, do you intend to leave our town? I mean, we have no right to stop you or anything. I don't think that that would be the case. No, I don't intend to go anywhere. Orient Town is my home now. Indeed it is. Just because she'll be hopefully able to save Arakune doesn't mean that she plans to leave any time soon. And there are many people who need me here. Yes, indeed. And uh, there are far more uh, members of the Kaka clan than, uh, than we th first thought. But, um, and that is a very uh, worried looking panda over there on the light cheese ponytail. The alternate truth is yet to be found. Well, that was certainly an interesting ending to uh, Lychee's story, but um, there are still many more roads that we can go down. So when we return adventurers, we shall go down yet another untrod path and see just where it might take us. As always adventurers, until next we meet.